if they know like their gender, for example, then like like if you're like a woman, right? You know that you don't know what you want to order tonight. <laughs> you know, and that's why they're hungry because yeah, they're women. And, yeah, and, like you know that you need your guy to like just be like, fuck it, like I'm just gonna pick one and like, yeah, we'll just get Thai food, fuck it, man. Welcome back to another very special Careful Boys where we are very careful boys. And today we're talking about what is your thoughts on victimhood in 2023? Victim? Like, uh, like being a victim? It seems like something that people wear proudly these days. It's a hot thing. Like a victimhood t-shirt. They like to put it on and everyone, and everyone look. Yeah, a little bit. What's on the t-shirt bar? I do, All kinds of different I do think during COVID, <laughs> <Which> thing? <laughs> it really brought up so many of the things that were boiling just in American society. But then like, some of it felt like, oh, finally there's justice. And then it started feeling like, that feels extreme. Mm -hmm. And then some of it was just like, what the fuck is this? And then so many things just felt weird, right? Like, I'm at this point now where nothing feels like honestly motivated. Right. Like back then when you saw a social justice movement before COVID, it was just like, oh, these minorities are fighting for equality. And you took it for face value, really. Yeah. Like you didn't see the ulterior motive. Or like now it's like all these things coming out, like, like we supported BLM and then we found out that the founders embezzled the money, bought mansions. In white even, neighborhoods. In white neighborhoods, yeah. yeah. They, didn't even, they didn't even give it to the people that they were saying they're gonna help. Yeah. And then the George Floyd family didn't get a dime out of it and all that stuff. And I was like, dude, now it's like, everything is like, you gotta question everything. Yeah. Everything's for theater. Yeah. Just to do this thing and then- It's a narrative cool. to sell a story. Yeah. Yeah, sell is the right word. It, it seems like there's times where people use the flag of, of being a victim and then figure out how to monetize it or capitalize it on some way, you know what I mean? Whether it's just notoriety, fame, credibility, or straight up money. You know, there was, you know, there was a group even in the, in the dance world that was using, you know, the uh, BLM movement and just being like, um, you know, like this is, uh, people gotta learn and unlearn certain things and realize that all of this culture came from like black people and history and stuff like that. So in order for you to learn that, you gotta pay us for our lessons. And it was kind of like, well, this is a really confusing time. So I, I guess maybe maybe that could make sense. But then once they were like gaining money on stuff and like actually taking money from people for these like lessons on stuff, like it just kept on turning into this habitual cycle, of like trying to find the next person that could be, you know, convinced that there was some sort of victimization to this one unique group that could figure out how to continue monetizing this concept. You know what I mean? So it, it, it like Joe said, it kind of just made you slowly start to question the integrity of some of these like you know claims and stuff and, and i think unfortunately it turned um just the perspective of that time into something where you're like yeah like you said you just have to start questioning more stuff because and when you're the victim you can't actually begin to solve the problem because it's happening to you so for example when like all the asian elders are getting beat up and then like, then you see all these Asian influencers going, oh, then the politicians need to do something. I'm like, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna say, hey, beating people up is illegal? I mean, it's already illegal. Yeah. You know, like everything that you just shout out, oh, why is it happening to us? Like none of those ever become a proactive thing. People like Ron setting up like the, the at the- Seniors park. fight back. Seniors yeah. fight like, back. That's yeah. doing something Forward, they're right. learning some skills. What was forward? Just to fill fill people in who don't know. There was a period where a lot of Asian elders, like senior citizens, grandmas, uh, grandpas, like in metropolitan areas, they're like the target of a lot of just random acts of violence. Still like going. cars roll up, just getting socked in the back of the head and shit like that. Probably because they know it's like easy target. I think it had to do with like just really dumb people thinking old Asian people are spreading COVID and they're the reason or something. And it was just like a, a period of angst where people were just mad they want to take their anger out. And so it was a lot of Asian uh, senior citizens getting attacked. And then so of course a lot of the more prominent Asian figures, they come out, but it's in a way where it's a very like victim t-shirt coming out. Mm -hmm. Like don't do this to us or whatever. But it's like when, whenever you say that, it's not, constructive you can't do anything about it 
you're not proactive versus the people that are actually going out setting up like these little seminars or like doing like situ situational awareness things and actually trying to push it forward because then once you go i can take control of this situation you can actually do something about it mm -hmm. if you're always like it's happening to us what are we going to do someone else got to do something yeah it's never gonna right you can never control the situation or improve it yeah ron did something about it yeah he did a, a like seniors fight back like he in like at a big park he did multiple classes where he was like, he's a pro fighter. Huge classes. Too. Yeah, so he would have all these like seniors come out, like this is what I would do. Some state award for one of the most like big, like nonprofits that gave back during this the couple of years and stuff. But yeah, what do you yeah. do? So they literally were teaching free workshops sure. to senior yeah. citizens, like Asian <laughs> seniors and stuff. And it's called Seniors Fight Back, teaching them how to like self defend. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? And Versus I what Bart's saying, people yeah. are just like jumping on the gram, being just, like, just this the, is baloney. Yeah. 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 Why is it happening to Dude, us? You know, um, this group that basically we're uh, pushing the whole like stop Asian hate, whatever, right? They got like a eight figure fund. Wow. And wow. no one knows where that money went, where it's being spent. It's like some NorCal Asian politician group, like political group. I don't know, like they're just, it's a nonprofit, profit Where did they guess. get the money from, just donations? No, the government. The state of California. Wow. Yeah. That's, That's what crazy. the stop Asian hate it's bill like did? Some, it's like some hate, it's like some anti, I, I'm, I'm butchering this, but I saw it um, on Next Shark. No, the commenters would have done something about that. <laughs> Joe's a commenter. The, the, commenter, the commenters on Next Shark are, are changing the world. Yeah. <laughs> At least when they're not being fucked with by this guy. <laughs> Kareem's number one. Getting in the way of God's work. <laughs> I think also um, when the media shows that something's getting a lot of attention, people that want attention do that thing. Yeah. They go like, oh, victims are kind of at the front page of everything. I too am a victim. You know, it's like when you're in class and a jealous kid also wants to have the same problem you do. Yeah. It's just that. It's like when you're watching Shark Tank and someone's like, hey, it's like I'm doing like a green energy, green energy thing. And then everyone, all the sharks are like, this is on trend. This is great. Sure, yeah. It's like, the, it's so transparent sometimes, yeah. but yeah. But I think even with like the not the people that want attention, but just that mentality is so big now that it's hurtful to themselves because they feel like they can't control anything. So there's even like people that are like, yeah. like big food, like that's the reason why I'm fat. Mm. Or that's the reason, you know, yeah, like they, they need processed food. Yeah, they yeah. gotta change the yeah. supermarkets. I'm like, or maybe you can change your dietary behavior. Yeah. I'm a victim of the FDA. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's the like, dirty. everything is now Fucking like, Fauci. everybody else's responsibility. Yeah. Like your your relationship, your spirituality, your, your intellectual, like every yeah, single thing, yeah. your whole thing is everyone else's responsibility. But then if that's the way it is, then you can't control anything, you can't improve anything. Yeah, it's true. I kind of feel like um, right now, it's this big awakening, right? It's, it's woke, but it's like right now, um, see, I've always been cynical and, and, and untrusting of institutions and government. But I think what COVID did was really bring that out. Because um, this guy was, I was watching this podcast and he was explaining how like it started really with the war in Iraq. Uh, everybody was like, when 9-11 when happened, all of America was like, we need to get these terrorists For those back. about to rock, dude. Remember right. that? It was yeah. a billboard. Everyone was like, was we like, were hungry for yeah, revenge. Yeah. Everyone was like, they're attacking America. Yeah. And what happened? We're like, hey, we got to go there for WMDs. We didn't find any. And then all of a sudden, it's bait and switch. Why are we in Afghanistan? Like, why are we, you know? And then that happens, right? Fast forward. Like, there's so many things where... Obama continues the words. Why? Strange. People start to lose more and more trust with the government. They vote for a guy who says hope and change. Exactly. Let's change and hope. And then, oh, we get the same shit as, as always. Oh, and there's a CIA document leak that says like, yeah, we wanted a new face for the wars and it was Obama. But even before that, right? Like there's like certain things like the bailouts when, when everybody fit like, and all these guys getting bailed out, insurance companies, and what do they do? They go on private island vacations, million dollar fucking bonuses, right? And then everyone's like watching this unfold and say, there's no accountability, no one's getting in trouble. And then little by little, it's chipping away at this fabric of like Americans trusting the government. 
or anything about 2008 it. happens yeah. right housing crisis who's helping kick people out of homes obama who would have saw that coming yeah hope and change again i'm just saying the narrative is busted like it and, and then people don't vote for him again in 20, 2012 but that doesn't really matter because like he's running against mitt romney it's like oh <laughs> shit so, so he got less votes right as an incumbent president he wins re-election less votes but yeah, people are more cynical now because of what Joe's talking about. I don't think Trump would have won. I agree. If they didn't it, exploit the public so hard. It was literally Obama voters actually who who turned the tide for Trump. Yep. Statistically, you could look at it in all these different precincts. It was Obama voters who carried the day for Trump. Because I think what happened to the American public is they were so sick of politicians. They were like, let's just try this business guy he doesn't seem corrupt Let's roll the dice and then now we're at this point after covid where it's gone so far where it's like we have corporations now that are virtue signaling and also like using social justice as a marketing plot and it it's works like, really yeah, well let's yeah, during pride month thing. let's yeah. make a fucking rainbow rainbow vodka cup, yeah. or whatever right and rainbow then sell, Svedka. yeah and then so like these movements are the integrity of the movements are just capitalized like, yeah it's, it's sure. all just it's all gone and i've said i said this like the victim stuff and people are so sick of hearing it what pisses me off is that like you know it's like blue haired white guys are just fighting republican <laughs> white guys and it's still white people fighting white people talking about whatever's and then minorities that had a point in certain things it gets really muddied and then now you have a, a karen who's talking on behalf of asians or whatever the fuck is going on and it's so muddied like it's, it's just so muddy yeah that's probably the worst it part it is the worst part yeah, it's victimhood. pandering victimhood hides the real victims yeah because real victims don't tend to want to be known as victims and there's transparent <laughs> things like why do you need like it's like hey we need rainbows, like I said, vodka or whatever the fuck. Rainbow it's like, vodka. they put a rainbow flag on it. And it's like, you got rainbow sherbet right there just waiting for something, but to do something with it. And rainbow sherbet's just sitting there with his fucking hand on his dick, just like. <laughs> He's been gay the whole time. Yes. Yeah, the whole time. Like, hello, I'm literally already rainbow. Let's go. Rainbow. Nobody plugs in. Nobody. Yeah. Or fruit striped gum. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it loses flavor so fast. It though. does. It's quick. Well, that would be anti-gay, kind of, because it's like, oh, uh, you're kind of trying out being gay, but then you're back. It's like it loses its flavor so quickly. <laughs> but you know what does suck, though, is when, let's say there is an actual issue, right? Like, let's say there is a real issue that let's, there's this community here. They just have the shittiest resources, the shittiest school systems. They need help, whatever. And if they speak out, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have other shit we need to worry about, like trans issues or whatever. Something takes precedence, right? Mm -hmm. So then like these groups that have nots, that have been suffering for so, so long and been asking for decades for help, they get overshadowed by all these different groups now. The right. trendy problems. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because right now the whole narrative is about like sexual orientation, all this stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck does that have to do with like all the people in poverty? right now in America. Like that's probably gonna, should take priority, right? Like how about the hungry kids? Like that probably takes priority versus like understanding gender studies or whatever. Like I'm not, I don't wanna downplay it, but it's still, if you weigh out the two, which one's more important? Yeah, what's gonna move the needle farther? Yeah, and then we completely forget that that still exists in America. And then now it's like all these other things are the loudest thing. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But do you think it's like, if they know like their gender, for example, then like like if you're like a woman, right? You know that you don't know what you want to order tonight. <laughs> you know, and that's why they're hungry because yeah, they're women. And, yeah, and, like you know that you need your guy to like just be like, fuck it, like I'm just gonna pick one and like Yeah. Well just get Thai food, fuck yeah. it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you don't you're just gonna sit here for like thirty-five minutes and like we're gonna go hungry, like babe. Come on, babe. <laughs> That's the real test of I'm which saying, gender. Yeah, it's, it blows my mind. So the men are the victim in that situation. In that situation, I think we are, yeah. Yeah. Just clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are the victims. Well, then what do you think of, like, reparations, for instance? <sighs> reparations yeah, become... Dial it up. Extremely Dial hard. Up. Add a zero to whatever <laughs> value they said. <laughs> it's hard to create I mean, a fair outcome because of, like 
how, how do you put a price on it? Because some of the shit that's been done, it's just so fucked up. It's like, how do you put a dollar sign on it? And another thing is, how do you trace specifically the legacy of it? So like, let's say it's been done to your great, great, great grandpa, but now like he might've fathered so many kids. So now his ancestors, there's like 600 people that's linked to that one grandpa that was hurt. So like, my thing is like, why not? And all I mean by that, and this sounds like pandering, and why not go ahead and accuse me of it, but, but, okay, so what just happened with COVID? All this fucking money gets printed, they hand it to all Wall Street. Jeez. I'm like, let's see what happens when we fucking just hand it to some people who, like, had a shitty lot in life, maybe. Like, your ancestors were slaves. Let's give you some money. I, like, I'd rather it finally go to some people who are people than going to where it always goes to. Every fucking time. Yeah? Yeah. Every, yeah, it's like the first time it goes to someone else. Why yeah. not? It's actually going in the that hands of a person. Yeah. Let's see what happens. At least it's yeah. a real person. It's going into a fan or something. <laughs> where to go? How many we, we, checks we gotta yeah. cut to Ukraine? We don't even know them. People. Yeah. I'm yeah. in. And yeah, less checks here, to Ukraine. Four people here that's been needing money. Whatever reason you want. Cut me in. Like, oh, they weren't slaves. I don't care. Just fight. They're real people. Like, they're, they're not like Raytheon or fucking Lockheed yeah. Martin. Let's try it out. I say fuck it. I roll yeah. the dice on that. Because maybe it's not so point. much following the direct descendants. The structures. Yeah, but maybe it's about like, hey, if you're going to spend frivolously like that, then why don't we spend it on American citizens? Exactly. Yeah. God forbid. What I said during COVID, oh, people hating on me all the time, the whole time. But what I say, you could give everybody in America like 20 grand each or whatever, but instead, no, they printed it all, give it to Tom Brady or whatever. Piece of shit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that should you drive people, Tom Brady. that should drive people crazy. Why did Tom Brady need money? Right? Like, why do people like Tom Brady need money? Or why did all these big fucking corporations, all these Wall Street places need money? Oh, I know why. Oh, Steve, because of their 401ks, all the people's 401ks and all the shit. Like, yeah, enjoy your, like, little amount of percent every fucking year. I got wrecked on Luna. I'm still beating you. Like, it's disgusting. Our financial system is a joke. <laughs> Crypto Corner every Tuesday, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't like about the whole victimhood thingy right now is that it distracts from actual victims and then we can't see who needs it. Exactly. So like, it's like if you if we were a hospital, right? And all these people are coming into the emergency room, we're not treating the people that's been shot and they're bleeding to death right now. We're here treating someone who's sneezing. Exactly. And then, Fucking exactly. And then Chris Rock said, right? Is that? He said, he said all we're doing is we got like a, a million paper cuts we're trying to treat. Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, we could get to it. I'm not going to just write it off and say that whatever they're dealing with isn't a problem. I'm. It is, but we have to, like, go through the tears. You got to prioritize. Like, yeah. If there's kids in poverty and they're not fucking eating a good meal every single day, why don't we deal with that? We have so much food in America. That's probably the first thing we want to deal with. No, what Ukraine about first. Ukraine first? Ukraine yeah. first. And then because they keep hungry. Yeah. Someone else's is, kids first. Is there is there by any chance a projected actual amount of money that it would take Ukraine to win the war? Is there like an actual like, we just need this Maybe. much and we'll win for sure? No, we right. have to constantly keep sending more and more and more and more. <laughs> so what kind of a Nick question? Yeah. Go ahead, Nick. That's my fucking job, dude. Yeah, that's Nick's job. What How dare you? To really make me sit here and research for like 45 minutes. What's oh. Vladimir Putin's favorite I mean, color? <laughs> I guess it always just also comes down to like the story that we as a society get bored of. You know what I mean? It's like, Maybe like the priority, if you like really list the problems that have to be solved financially or whatever, maybe the answer is always gonna stay the same for a very long time because it was such a huge problem. And it's like, ah, oh, well, we're fucking bored of this problem. Well, something yeah, else that maybe is seeming- But that's like how you get shit. real actually productive, is getting good at fixing boring shit. Yeah, but you know what I mean though? Like yeah, in terms of, of just like society and the American point. people, it's kind of like, well, this one's new and exciting and maybe it takes a little bit less. Maybe we should just try that instead. Right. We just like completely disregard some of the more, you know, the larger power. I'm more scared of like the Kafkaesque effect that happens when like, let's say we have a new problem and we're gonna put money towards it and we're gonna build this whole team to take care of it. The problem never gets taken care of because the team doesn't want to be disbanded and start losing money. For Kinda them. like a charity. That's what I'm scared of. It's like every new problem gets yeah. that new team. Like TSA, we'll never fucking get rid of it. Yep. It doesn't matter, they're gonna keep doing nothing. Yeah. Hey, look at the new restriction act, right? With TikTok. It's like, hey, uh, you use a VPN, we wanna put you away for 20 years. 
You, you heard about that shit? No, oh, but that dude, sounds terrible. Yeah. If you're using a VPN on like using some kind of app like TikTok, for example, which is what they're basically making this app for. Yeah. Um, and you're using it, but you're not supposed to. You could go away for 20 years. What the fuck? The Restrict Act, dude. 20 years? 20 years. So just for TikTok? Just for using an but, app yeah. that you're not supposed to use. Not approved by the US government. Team. What about Netflix? Can I use a VPN on Netflix so I can get channels from other countries? You're in it 25 years. <laughs> well, no, now Netflix is cracking down on you about that. Like, only so many accounts. Dude, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I mean, the problems, the problems are money makers for somebody that's right. all it is which is yeah. why they'll never solve it right Free it's like every single time somebody like cures cancer it's like what the fuck there's a cure for cancer and then those people get like fucking silenced or some shit it's because yeah. there's no like money in curing cancer right there's only money in fucking trying to fix it and there's honestly no money in continuing this video because we're done <laughs>